here at Shindigan Valley. I mean, Shindigan Hollow. In this video, Zane and I go for a big ride at Shindigan Hollow State Forest. Still don't know if I'm saying that right, but we covered a lot of mileage and ran into a little bit of a puppy problem. But you have to watch to the end to find out what happened. I put the name of each trail that we were on in the upper left hand corner of the screen and the color of the words corresponds to the difficulty of the trail. As you've already seen, we started the day by climbing up Bald Mountain to descend Short Bus. No warm up necessary, we dropped straight into a black diamond. Short Bus was actually super fun and fast with some technical features sprinkled in. That was insane. <laughs> You got a leaf in your cleat. Oh. Paper boy dropping in. Take one. Pound it. Oh. Since Zane caused so much damage to Short Bus with his accidental steez, I forced him to get me some follow cam footage on Paper Boy. <laughs> Trying to hit the stump drop. Yeah, that's just follow behind me and I'll do it in front. Not gonna lie, I wish I had sent the stump drop a bit better because that looked quite insignificant. But anyway, Paperboy doesn't have as many features as Short Bus. What it lacks in obstacles, it makes up for in rolling, flowing terrain and unsupportive corners. The end of Paperboy pops you out onto the gravel road where you can cross oh, to yeah. drop into what I'll just call the ditch because Venture's a family friendly channel, alright? Seriously though, the ditch is one of the shorter descents <laughs> here, but well worth it. It starts with a nice tabletop jump that I cleared pretty well and becomes a rooty and rocky chute towards the creek crossing that signifies the end of the trail. From there we went back up the road to the main parking lot and got onto B1 heading for B2 Dizzy D. We missed the left for Dizzy D, but we didn't mind because this part of B1 is so much fun. Once we did the sketchy log bridge, we decided to turn around and cautiously backtrack B1 to find the left turn onto B2 Dizzy D. And I've gotta say, Dizzy D was probably my favorite trail of the day. There's plenty of switchback turns that are linked together to carry you down to a set of three tabletop jumps in succession. The first one gives you a lot of speed and you have to weave through two trees like a goalpost and turn left into the smaller two jumps. These jumps definitely look like they need some love, but they were still pretty smooth and very intuitive. If they added a big berm after the first one and lengthened the next two jumps, it would be an incredible section of trail. After that, the trail straightens out and showcases a couple of whoops in the ground that you can send to flat at ludicrous speed. After the little rock drop, the trail winds down the hillside some more and spits you out onto another gravel road. That's the key to this place. If you have a sense of which gravel road you are on, you can navigate the trails here without too much trouble. We've been using trail forks non-stop lately, and I coughed up the $18 for the subscription because it's so vital to our rides these days. <laughs> oh, coming in hot. Anyway. We dropped into the rim trail which a local guy had told us about and it sounded really cool. 
but I was a bit disappointed. It's basically a trail of loamy dirt with no features except a couple steep shoots and you're almost constantly on the rim of the hillside. Wow, look at that exposure. It's steep over there. <laughs> Some spots just drop away with enough significance that we came to a crawl as we meandered through the pine trees. Whoa. Whoa. Alright, so this is where we ran into our puppy problem. As soon as we began riding G2, Zane mentioned something about a dog. I didn't really hear him and I didn't hear the dog, let alone the dog's owner. What? You did not hear me say that. I heard it, but I didn't hear the dog. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Ah. The dog gave us a couple of barks when we picked up speed which didn't help the situation because it sounded like it was chasing us. Keep in mind we still had no idea where this dog's owner was. The trail kept getting steeper and faster while I heard Zane warn about the chasing dog behind me. So I kept riding faster, hoping to outrun it, and this dog was fast. He must have been as big of a fan of flowy descents as we are. It gets steep! Huh? Just showing a dog. Bro, why don't they control their dog? Actually, dog, left side. Sir! Excuse me! Orange helmet! You gotta control your dog a little bit more, man. She's up here tripping us up, kind of in front of the trail. She's up here tripping us up, kind of in front of the trail. Gotta keep her a bit closer. Supposed to be on a leash technically on state ground, but have a nice day. You too. Good guy. <laughs> the stupidity of people is just baffling sometimes. So at the end of the day, I'm not 100% sure on what the laws are for dogs on state grounds, but the DEC does state they must be on a leash in the Adirondacks. So I'd imagine similar guidelines would stretch into state forests like Shenandoah, but I honestly don't know for sure. I don't really have a problem with the dog being off a leash on the trail. I was just amazed at how this guy didn't want to take any responsibility for his dog. A little sorry would have been nice. This ain't Long Island. Zane and I were riding this trail for the first time and luckily the real steep parts came after this incident. But had we kept going I would have been incredibly anxious about getting tripped up by the dog and potentially hurting the dog as well as myself. It was a shame our last trail of the day had such an issue, but we still had tons of fun on the rest of it. Wow. Oh my goodness. Very nice. Besides our little puppy issue, that was a well good day. What is that thing? That just about wraps up a great ride at Shenandoah. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. And remember, stay adventure, my friends. Oh.